hello and welcome to the show. Now, aerodynamics play a very, very big part when it comes to, I say, modern race cars, even 20 year old, even slightly older race cars and so on. Aerodynamics plays a huge part, fundamental part in many racing vehicles. I've talked about this uh, in the past with various tests in Forza 7 and so on. You get cars like this Toyota, for example, that have crazy, crazy aerodynamic aids going on a humongous rear wing there to help push the back of the car down into the road. It helps the car, well, carry more speed, keeps the back planted through corners and helps a little bit with uh, keeping it planted through higher speed stuff as well. Likewise, at the front, we've got splitters, we've got canards and all sorts of other aerodynamic aids to help push the front of the car down, help give the car some turning to corners. However, this is on a rear wheel drive race car and I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you that whenever I do a video with front wheel drive cars racing, if I happen to mention a wing or run cars with large rear wings, there will still be those who claim that a rear wing on a front wheel drive car is useless. So I was determined to prove those people wrong. In fact, we know it's wrong when it comes to real life. There are various experiments that have been run. Hell, you just need to look at touring cars. When it comes to race cars, nothing goes on the vehicle that is pointless. You don't put aerodynamic aids on a car if it doesn't do any good. All you have to do is watch touring cars on the opening lap when they have cold tyres in the skittering around that you get from the rear end of those cars to know that a rear wing is very much necessary. But even all of that, there will still be those that claim the rear wing isn't, isn't required. Yes, the rear doesn't drive in these cars. Even when you go up to the crazy Nismo front wheel drive LMP car, no, the rear wheels aren't being driven. However, they do still have to hold on to the road. And a rear wing will help with that. It's perhaps less important on these kind of cars, absolutely, but it is still going to be needed. In terms of having the back ends of these cars slide around. The Nismo is one of the easiest where you can get it out of shape. Again, on cold tyres, this thing can at times be a little bit sketchy through the faster corners, and you can get a uh, bit of oversteer with this one. You've got to be a bit mindful for a couple of laps until the tyres have warmed up. Sure, understeer is probably going to be the bigger issue for a while, but uh, yeah, you can get the, the car quite upset. It's an odd, very odd thing to drive. It's a very, very strange thing to drive. However, because even though I can say these things, people will still choose to be ignorant and ignore it, you have to go off and run experiments to get some actual hard facts in terms of lap times. So, it was off to building various vehicles. We start with the Vauxhall Astra. I haven't really used the uh, Astra too much. I actually quite like this as far as, as hot hatches go. Build it up to uh, B class. Now, you actually get a decent amount of speed in this car. In B class, over 300 horsepower. It's on sport tyres as well. So it's uh, you know, a half decent, a half decent race build. Now, for the first test, I chose to run no aero. Of course, the most kind of benefit you will, of course, get from front aero parts, but for the sake of this, I am testing, I am experimenting with only adding on a rear wing to help the car with lap times in terms of aerodynamics. So for, yeah, for the basic build, it has no aero parts on the car whatsoever. As you can imagine, it is a little bit on the understeery side. It is, uh, you can see it coming out of some of these corners. But you saw I ended up a little bit across the grass at one point. Yeah, you jump on the throttle and you can get a fair bit of understeer. Now that's not going to be helped by adding on a rear wing. You're still going to have that on power understeer. But the hope is that when you come to add on that rear wing, that uh, the stability through some of the corners, you'll be able to carry a little bit more speed. So, again, test was uh, rerun. Uh, it was six laps around Sonoma. That's said as fast a lap time as possible. And this is a track that I do know pretty, uh, pretty damn well. Now, interestingly... The rear wing on this car will reduce the PI. So building this up to B-Class, I have uh, a fair amount of PI to play around with, but putting the rear wing on this drops the PI down. I think it's 4 or 5 PI in the case of the Astra. Now the downside, of course, of having the wing is drag. It reduces the vehicle's 
top speed by a couple of miles an hour. It might make it slightly slower accelerating. And so when it comes to the straights by a little bit because of the because of the drag. The bonus, of course, is that it can corner. And with the front-wheel drive cars, on Forza, the kind of loss of PI for having that rear wing means you can put more power in the car, meaning that the loss of straight-line speed, that loss of top speed, is pretty much negated. Pretty, pretty, pretty much gone. Now, to kind of compensate for this, I ran two additional tests. So I ran the car with just the rear wing as an addition, with it being lower PI, and the test with a car with a rear wing and added power that would, or I could, within that PI. So lap time-wise, with the wing and PI 123.7, with just the wing a 124.0, without the wing a 124.6. It certainly does make a difference. Now, I picked Sonoma because it is a fairly fairly high speed corners around here the places where a, a wing is going to make an impact on a car such as this so to answer the question of does a front wheel drive car need a wing well it certainly is going to make a difference of course if you're ride, racing around daytona that extra drag might cause you issues although the extra power you can get in with the pi may well negate said extra drag I mean, there's always a second difference for the same pi with a slightly different combination of parts so it was off to a, another test, a different class and a different track. The Catalonia National Circuit is a testing venue that I like to use. It's difficult to find a circuit that is completely balanced between straight line speed and between cornering. Of the circuits I have to play with, I feel as if the Catalonia National is the best overall. There is a long straight, there are some medium speed corners, there is a very, very technical section towards the end, some big braking zones. It's a good test of just about every different aspect of a car. The vehicle that we were going to use, a personal favourite of mine in terms of front wheel drive, the 695 Abarth, a lovely car to drive this one. A lovely, lovely vehicle. Very, very good handling for a front-wheel drive car. And I built it to C-Class. So, a lower PI for this one. Didn't have too much in the way of upgrades. It's not crazy overpowered. This, unlike the Astra in which will spin its wheels an awful lot if you aren't very careful. That is not the case at all here. With the Abarth, it's a fairly sensible a fairly sensible hot hatch. You know, if I was building a car to run in, in C-Class, this wouldn't be completely out of the question. Probably other vehicles I'd end up going to. However, this was, yeah, a fairly a fairly competent vehicle. So again, it was uh, given five laps around this circuit to set the time without that rear wing. Of course, here there are less corners for the wing to make a difference on, unlike at Sonoma where there's a lot of medium speed corners. Here, you know, some of the low speed corners, that wing's not going to make any difference. You're not going to be fast enough. To make a huge amount of difference on the on the Abarth, and there is a fairly damn long straight for the drag to potentially potentially hinder it. Again, when it was rebuilt, the wing made a huge difference to the PI here. We're talking 10 PI. That's a massive massive drop for a couple of miles an hour slower in terms of straight line speed. Also, interestingly, when it comes to tire widths, now I didn't put any tire widths on the on the bar, the rear tires reduce PI because they are slightly heavier. The game kind of doesn't seem to register, recognize so much that rear end grip on the front wheel drive cars will still impact them, will still help them and so on seems perhaps a little bit strange to me, but it might also go a way to explaining how you can get very, very fast front-wheel drive cars. In some of these lower classes, you can make monstrously fast front-wheel drive vehicles, and I wonder if perhaps that is one of the, the reasons, because, yeah, ha having a rear wing and maximum tire widths on this car, rear tire widths here, would drop you 11 PI. Of course, you'd want a front splitter on the car as well, which will add on to the PI, but yeah, that's a an interesting interesting discovery, an interesting thing to consider when building cars. Certainly, we don't see very many front-wheel drive cars running events that, that we do. Uh, certainly, in lower classes, I think there are perhaps sneaky ways of, uh, of getting around. Yeah, 11 PI or 10 PI in the case that we were doing doing here, trying to keep the build as fair as possible, is a big old a big old gain 
for the car in, in certainly in terms of power. So yeah, there is a decent amount of uh, potential for upgrades. To the lap times, not such a big difference between the wing and the no wing here. Only 0.1 of a second, perhaps not so surprised. Around this more balanced circuit, less places for that wing to help and a long straight for it to hinder more that we didn't see at Sonoma. With the wing and the uh, PI adjusted accordingly, we made over half a second quicker. Again, this is a car that is identical in terms of PI, but is going a fair bit faster around this what is a fairly balanced circuit. So, does a wing make a difference on a front-wheel drive car? Absolutely. It 100% makes a difference to the way that these vehicles drive. Is it necessary? Well, that does depend on the circuit that you are driving, the scenario that you are driving at who. I would also like to add that the biggest benefits of having the wing on the car I can't necessarily fully exploit because that will come down with tuning. What it does allow you to do is you can get more aggressive with the tuning on this car. Ideally, you want to be having a front-wheel drive car oversteering. I know it sounds a bit weird, but ideally you want to be having a front-wheel drive car oversteering because that means you are making the most of that front-end grip. So you can tune your car in such a way that you will have yeah, the back end stepping out, it means you've made the most of the front end grip. You add a wing onto that car, you can then push it even further before you start struggling with oversteer. Now that will come down to some tuning work. Work that I can kind of ish do, and I kind of work a little bit with the above. I got a couple of uh, a couple of tenths faster around this lap with some tuning, but I'm, I know I'm nowhere near good enough to be a kind of a reliable judge of, uh, of some of that, but yeah, that is what you can do, and again, that's where the wing is going to come in into effect. So, to, to sum it all up, yes, yes, very much so. A wing will still make a difference to a front-wheel drive car. It can be a fairly sizable difference, and especially when it comes to Forza 7 when you're taking PI into account, and a lot of the time what you do with the back of the car in a front-wheel drive vehicle Forza gets a little bit confused with, there is definitely potential, there is definitely ways to be gaining a decent amount of performance with aero and with parts at the back of the car. Am I still going to get comments? Quite probably. However, <laughs> we have got extra super definitive proof that uh, a wing can make a very big difference to a front wheel drive. That though is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, uh, goodbye.